Hello, dear viewer. I am Dr. Mahesh Naikis, Assistant Professor of English, Vedavati Government First Grade College, Hiriur, Chitradurga District, affiliated to Davanagere University. In this video, I have made an attempt to explain the main aspects of the essay Reflections on Gandhi which is prescribed for the second semester BCom and BBA students of Davanagere University. This essay is written by George Orwell. George Orwell's original name is Eric Arthur Blair. He was a British novelist, essayist, critic and journalist. One important thing, I mean interesting thing about Orwell is he was born in Bihar, India. This essay examines Gandhi's philosophies, ideologies, concepts and their impact on world politics and on the lives of Indian people as well. It presents Gandhi in different perspectives. The writer begins the essay by asking a question whether Gandhi could be called a saint. Gandhi is known for the noble qualities like humbleness, simplicity, spirituality and human values. At the same time, Gandhi also joined politics and he played an important role in Indian politics and also in the world politics. Orwell feels that politics is assumed as a field of coercion and fraud. Coercion means using force and threat. So to answer the question whether Gandhi could be called a saint, one has to read or know clearly about Gandhi's acts and his writings, especially his autobiography. The writer believes that Gandhi could have become a brilliant lawyer or an administrator or a businessman if he had wanted. The writer says that some principles of Gandhiji were not suitable to a backward, starving, overpopulated country like India. Another thing here the writer stresses is the relationship of the British with Gandhi. According to the writer, the British used Gandhi to prevent any violence by Indians against them. No British official considered him as corrupt, jealous or coward. He is known for his natural physical courage. He had no bodyguards. We know that he used to walk alone, of course, with his followers. But they are just followers, not his bodyguards. He believed that other people were acting in good faith. That means the people with whom he came into contact, they 
responded in a good manner having good thoughts in their minds and heart though he was from a middle class family and had a poor physical appearance gandhi had no inferiority or envy he was surprised to see color feeling in south africa and of course he comes across with this color feeling first in south africa he did not think people in terms of race or status because whether it was a governor or a millionaire or a british soldier or a half starved dravidian that is indian everyone was the same for him gandhi started his life as a normal ambitious young indian student that means he was as a young man just like all other indian young men or women of course he gradually developed his extremist opinions that means whatever concepts later he found or introduced to the world they all came gradually to him he did not have all those philosophical values or ideas from his birth itself there were times as a young man gandhi wore a top hat took dancing lessons that means he went to learn dance to dancing school he tried to learn violin the musical instrument he did all these because he wanted to be like a like a like a european that means he was fascinated with the lifestyle of the europeans Gandhi makes full confession of the misdeeds of his youth. He smoked cigarettes, ate meat, visited brothel, that means prostitutes. But the writer says in the essay even though he went two times to brothel he returned without doing anything. Gandhi's character was an extraordinarily mixed one but there was nothing one could call bad Gandhi imposed some disciplines on himself self disciplined person Gandhi was he considered these disciplines were must if one wanted to serve either god or humanity these disciplines were no meat eating no alcohol or tobacco no spices or condiments further if possible no sexual intercourse and if at all sexual intercourse has to happen then it should be for begetting children only Gandhi himself in his middle 30s took the oath of brahmacharya if one has to be good and flawless according to gandhi there must be no close relationships and no exclusive lover that means one should not have close friends or lover because close friendships or love can lead human beings into wrong doing to show loyalty to your friend or to your lover many a time you are forced to 
do some wrong deeds. But even though he laid or prescribed all these doctrines, he did not insist every one of his followers to follow these things strictly. If one is to love God or to love humanity, one cannot give one's preference to any individual person. Because if you give your preference to any individual person, then there is every chance to lose concentration on serving God or humanity. On three occasions, Gandhi was willing to let his wife or a child die rather than eat the animal food prescribed by the doctor. At the same time, Gandhi always gave the patient the choice of staying alive at the price of committing a sin. Here, committing a sin, according to Gandhi, is eating animal food. That means, if a patient wants to eat animal food in order to get his disease or illness cured, then Gandhiji would have no objection for that. It is difficult for a common human being to follow all these disciplines laid by Gandhi. Another important thing, Gandhi's Satyagraha was a sort of non-violent warfare. We know very well this thing. It is a way of defeating the enemy without hurting him or her. It is carried out through things as civil disobedience, strikes, lying down in front of railway trains, enduring police charges and the like. In his early days, Gandhi served as a stretcher bearer on the British side in the Boyer War. This Boyer War took place from 1899 to 1902 between England and South Africa. At that time, Gandhiji worked with the British Army as a stretcher bearer, as the writer mentions in the prose or in the essay. Though he was completely against violence, he believed that if there is war, one has to take or it is necessary for one to take sides. That means you have to support any one side. Gandhi was honest in giving opinions, whatever the issue is. Even the writer considers Gandhi more honest than the European statesmen or politicians in giving opinions. Once Gandhi was asked a question that how can the Jews in Germany be saved without resorting to war? We know that in Germany Hitler massacred the Jews like cattle and sheep. So for this question Gandhi's view was that the German Jews are to commit collective suicide because it would turn the attention or interest, I mean, let me say the attention of the world towards this massacre going in Germany at that time. If one is not prepared to take lives, he must often be prepared for lives to be lost in some other way. Another example for his honest opinion is, there is 
an invasion that means in 1942 he urged a non violent resistance against a japanese invasion he was ready to admit that this non violent resistance against a japanese invasion might cost several millions deaths the writer does not agree with many gandhi's views that all human beings are more or less approachable and will respond to a generous gesture that means gandhi believed that all people will respond in the same manner or politely if we respond like that with them but the writer orwell has an objection to this because according to him even though you respond in a good gesture people like lunatics hypocrites or dictators definitely will not respond in the same warmth the doctrines of gandhi have to be seriously given consideration before a third world war begins one feels that there was much that gandhi did not understand that means some people think that gandhi ji did not know so many things but at the same time there was nothing he was afraid of saying or thinking or even doing that means if gandhi thought that something was good and he felt that it could be carried out he definitely would do in the same manner without any fear of any persons whether it could be indian politicians or the british rulers the writer does not have much liking for gandhi but he feels sure that as a political thinker gandhi was not a failure that means he was not wrong in the things he did for india and we know that gandhi's main political objective was the peaceful ending of british rule in india and of course it is sure with his non violent method with his undaunting courage and conviction in his philosophies and ideologies he got india freedom and by that as the writer feels gandhi ji's life was a successful one thank you